Hi, my name is uh, Neil Howe. I've been uh, writing and speaking about generations for over about 20 years now. I recently came out with a book called Millennials in the Workplace about today's rising generation of workers. Uh, because millennials are different from older generations, uh, they represent a dimension of workplace diversity that often gets overlooked. So what do all you Xers and boomers out there think about millennials? Well, I already know because I've been talking to you, uh, uh, talking uh, a lot with, with you about them, and you don't think much of them. <laughs> uh, I get complaints about everything from uh, short attention spans and poor grammar to flip-flops and Facebook breaks. According to a recent Pew study, uh, most older Americans think that millennials are deficient in almost everything, moral values, uh, sensitivity to others, work ethic. Now, I think that there are two big problems with this, with this kind of cross-the-board negativity. First of all, it's just factually incorrect. Uh, this generation has been responsible for huge declines in youth crime, teen pregnancy, teen abortion, uh, declines in alcohol and, and, and tobacco abuse, and rises in youth voting, community service, educational attainment. I mean, come on. But there's another problem I have with this negativity, and I think it's more relevant to you all. If you choose to view young people primarily in terms of their faults, in terms of uh, you know, them as, as kind of damage control, you will never be able to lead them because you won't have a clue about their, what motivates them, about their strengths, and so you'll never be able to harness all that. Young people are not just defective replicas of you. <laughs> They are different generations. They, they came along at a different time. Think of it this way. Boomers reached adulthood during the age of Aquarius. Gen Xers grew up as children during the age of Aquarius. But millennials are coming along after all that was over, all that family turmoil, social turmoil, and they're coming around as a very different group of people than boomers or Xers. They're pressured and programmed. They're networked to their peers and they're bonded to their parents. They want structure, and they're looking for risk-free, long-term career paths, and they find them hard to find. So when you're thinking about millennials, remember you've got to learn to leverage these traits. We all know they're special, right? So you've got to leverage that. They come in the first day, don't say, you're not special. I know, I know they're Gen Xers who think that's kind of a tough love program. You know, you kids aren't very special. It won't work, I'm telling you right now. You've got to say something like, yes, you're very special, and guess what? We expect special things from you. There's so many ways to leverage positive self-esteem. They want structure, so leverage that. This is a high-maintenance generation. They crave praise. They, uh, they're feedback junkies. And so you give them constant tasks, you give them constant benchmarks, and you say, tell them how they're meeting or not meeting their benchmarks. This generation is into teamwork, so you've got to leverage that. Hire them in teams, organize them as teams. You can even compensate them as teams. In the era of sort of cutthroat youth competition, we, you know, epitomized by you know, Donald Trump's show, The Apprentice, that era is coming to an end. So instead, give them net networked IT and encourage them to help each other on the job. And allow them to see your workplace as part of a bigger team, playing a positive role in the regional or national uh, scene Millennials want to see themselves as participating in something larger. Well, we know they're into norms. They're into rules. So leverage that. I mean, I t it's amazing. I talk to boomers and Xers. They say they're offended. They get angry when millennials do something or say something that's wrong. They think it's being disrespectful to them. And I tell them it's almost never disrespect. It's ignorance. <laughs> they don't know what the rules are. They had boomer and Xer parents, of course, who never taught them the rules. And we have a pop culture that celebrates rule breaking. So have, organize a soft skills curriculum. Give them checklists. Tell them the do's and don'ts. Or review that. Give them a gold star when they do it right. Let them put it on their resume. They will thank you. They won't just not mind. They'll thank you. And finally, this generation, well, they're, um, they have long-term time horizons. So you want to leverage that, too. I mean, this generation um, uh, is, is preparing those long-term career plans at every earlier ages, right? And polls show that millennials overwhelmingly prefer to have maybe one or two employers over their lifetime, or one perfect employer, than have a great many employers. 
So you gotta, you gotta understand this. I, again, I meet older generations of, of, of managers who, who don't pay any attention to their internships. They think they're a joke. They have no serious mentorship program. They don't promise any long-term career advancement path when these millennials get there. And, and they don't have any uh, schedule of st skills acquisition. And these are the first managers, the first ones to say, when most of their millennials are gone after 18 months, they say, you know, we knew it all along. These millennials are only in it for today. The millennials are arriving. The stakes are huge. I mean, over the next decade, businesses that get this generation right will have huge uh, market and business advantages over, gener over the businesses that don't. And more importantly, you will be helping a very powerful generation find its historical destiny. Thank you very much. Terrific. Neil, great stuff. Thank you. Um, I certainly made me feel every bit the fuddy-duddy that I've now become uh, to learn all this about the millennials. Um, it also sounds a bit like um, uh, you're asking us all to be the parents they never had. Um, but, you know, leave that aside. A more serious question. Um, one of the themes of our conference, which we're going to, uh, we've already started to talk about, is what motivates people. The role of money, for example, versus purpose. It's going to be the topic of our great debate that we're going to have tomorrow afternoon. Um, can you tell us? You gave us a little bit of idea in terms of nurture, feedback, um, uh, those kinds of things help retain them. But what actually gets them to get out of bed? What, you know, the, the relative balance of money versus other things. So what's your short answer on that? Well, I, you know, I tell people that millennials, millennials are surprisingly conventional. Um, you ask them what they want to do as they grow older. They say they want to be well-rounded people. They want balanced careers. They want to be good citizens and good neighbors. Uh, a record share, according to the UCLA freshman survey, a record share say they want to have kids and they want to get married. Uh, the question is whether the economy will allow them to do that. We do know that people in their late 20s are often more likely to attend the seminar where they're discussing fringe benefits and, and 401k plans than people sometimes in their late 30s. <laughs> because these millennials are on the cell phone every afternoon with their parents, and their parents are telling them what to do, right? <laughs> Uh, and also because, again, they're looking down the road and often they have as lessons their own parents who didn't do those things right. Hey, mom, why are you still, you know, temping at three different jobs? And dad, how come you never, you don't have any preparation for retirement? So it's also generational learning. But they want, they want security. And I have noticed on this question of pay, employers are constantly impressed by how often talented young people, they don't want to know what they get paid this year. They, they want to know what they're going to be paid three and five years down the road. Fascinating. I'm going to have to take it up with Steven Pinker uh, about you know, the lingering effects of parenthood as these uh, millennials grow up. But uh, thank him. Please give him a round of applause for his wonderful flash of genius. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.